Would everyone stand, please? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He who dwell in the secret place of the, of the, of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortune. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowls. And from the pestle, the pestle he shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wings you shall take refuge. His trust shall be, in, be your shield and your butler. You shall not be afraid of the terrors by night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that walketh in the night. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earthly desire to be closed upon our house, in habitation which is from heaven if indeed having been closed we shall not be found naked but we but we who are in this tabernacle grown being burdened not because we want to be unclosed but whether closed that mortality might be swallowed up of life now he which have prepared us for this very thing is God, who also have given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many nations. If he would not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you, and where I am, you may be also. The earth is the Lord, and all its fullness. The word who they who dwell therein, for he has found it upon the sea, and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hills of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? Give unto the Lord, O he mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto, unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I 
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue be in my mouth. My soul shall make it boast in the Lord. The armor shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were generated. And their faith was not ashamed. The poor man cried out of, out of the Lord. The Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped around those who feared him and delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For there is no want to those who fear him. The young man, the young lion like and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not like any good thing. Come, ye children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is that man who desire life? And love many days that he may see good. merciful to me, O oh God. Be merciful to me. For my soul trusts in you and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge. Until these climax have passed by I will cry out to God the Most High. To God who performed all things for me. My soul is among the lounge. I lie among the sons of men who are set on fire. Bless him. spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to it going down out of sound the perfection of beauty God will shine forth our God shall come and shall not keep silent a fire shall devolve before him and it shall be buried temperate also around him thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises to, his, to your name, O my O Most High. Declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on the instruments of ten screens, on the looks and on the harps. For you, Lord, has made me glad. Through your works I will triumph in the works of your hands.
Okay, this concludes the visitation. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus. I was saying this morning, if I could sing, I would sing, Who can stand against the Lord? No one can, no one will. Who will stand against the King? No one can, no one will. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Um, I just want to welcome everyone today to the celebration of life for um, Chelsea. Chavis, and um, just want to thank everyone for coming out. It was raining hard this morning, so I didn't know what was going to happen. You know how we do when it rains, but I just thank God that everyone is here. Right now, we have our first selection by Joyce Smith, Satan, I'm sorry, which is her great aunt. I would like to say, I had said that I would not sing at another funeral, but um, Carrie said that Chelsea said, oh, okay. if anything right. ever happened to me, I want Aunt Joyce to sing one of those old Mahalia Jackson songs. So I'm going to do the best I can, and I would like to say, Cassie, thank you, baby, for all, but Chelsea spoke a lot about you. Uh, Tiffany, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to try to sing. I'm going to move on up a little higher. One these mornings, soon one morning, my Lord, I'm going to lay down my cross and get my crown. Soon one We're gonna live, tell me Lord, on forever. We're gonna live on up in glory after a while. I'm going outside, sin and beauty. March around God's altar. Walk and never get I'm sorry, I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I'm gonna have to change it up a little bit. I'm gonna change it up, but I start off in the wrong tune. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna continue. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna continue. I'm gonna. One these mornings. Soon one morning, my Lord. I'm gonna lay down my cross. And get my crown. And I'm, I'm okay, sure. Keep going. I got you. Soon as my feet strike Zion, lay down my heavy burden. Put on my robe in glory. What's going on? Going home one day, tell my story. I've been coming over hills and mountains. I'm going to drink from the crystal fountain. You know that all of God's sons and daughters that morning will drink that old 
healing water and we're gonna live on forever we're gonna live on forever we're gonna live on up in glory at the wild i'm going out sight seeing in beulah march around god's altar walk and never get tired i'm gonna fly that morning never falter i'm gonna move on up a little higher meet that old man daniel i'm gonna move on up a little higher meet paul and silas I'm gonna move on up a little higher. Meet my grandma V. I'm gonna move on up a little higher. Meet my granddaddy T. I'm gonna move on up a little higher. Meet my aunt Tony. Of Sharon, it will be always howdy, howdy, always howdy, howdy, always howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. Tell me, will you be there soon in the morning? You can speed it up. You'll be there somewhere around the altar. Will you be there? Shall call the road. God knows I'll be waiting soon in the morning. And I'll be watching early one morning. And I'll be waiting, oh, at the beautiful golden gate. Soon as my feet strike Zion, I'm gonna lay down my heavy burden. Put on my robe in glory, going home one day, tell my story. I've been coming over hills and mountains. I'm going to drink from the crystal fountain. You know that all of God's sons and daughters that morning will drink that old healing water. Meet you, me there early in the morning. Meet you, me there. Around the altar, me to me there. Oh, 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 when the angels share. she's talking about she's talking about life after this there is life after this there is joy after this amen amen um next is uh opening prayer by pastor larry eckerson then it's going to be a solo by ari and caleb moore cousins and scriptures old and new testament by miss lizzie rogers great aunt in that order Thank you, God, for this morning. I thank God for uh, the Chabel family and the Burton family. I've been knowing uh, Mike and uh, Mike and his wife a long time. They used to come to church up there in Chapel Hill when I was passing up there. And I thank God I fell in love with them. And at this time, praise the Lord, we're going to have open prayer. The God of Abraham, the God of Moses, and the God of Isaac.
Lord, you are our God today. We come before you, Lord, as I'm, oh God, we know how. Lord, giving you praise and giving you thanks, God, because God, you God Almighty. Uh, there's no other God but you, God. Uh, and Lord, we pray, God, that you bless, Lord. Uh, oh God, this family this morning. Uh, oh God, we pray that you take this service to God. Uh, and God, you bless it, God. Uh, Lord, we pray for our speaker today. Uh, God, we ask you to anoint her. We ask you to use her. We ask you to bless us, Lord. Uh, God, Build us up while we torn down, God. Lord, strengthen us while we're weak, God. Lord, wrap your loving arms around this family, of God. And Lord, it came through at this moment in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, and God, you need thank for us. Uh, we need help us to your name, praise and glory and honor restored to thy name. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How many of you know there's no failure in God? No, y'all can do better than that. How many of you know that there is no failure in God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In God, there is no failure. He will do whatever you ask him to y'all can stand to your feet and clap just have faith and believe many blessings you will receive for there is no failure no failure whoa in god there is Just have faith and believe many blessings you will receive, for there is no failure, no failure. Whoa, there's never been a time in my life he let me fall. There's never been a time when he did not answer my Just have faith, he'll be right there. There is no failure. 
failure in God. In failure in God. Lord, have mercy. As Aunt Lizzie come up, I just want to say that this is no failure in God. His answer is always yes and yes. She might get healed and go home, or she'll be healed and go home. So she went home. She'll be healed here, or she'll be healed there. God, we thank you for your healing. We look at it as being a failure, but it's not a failure because God's answers is always yes and amen. My niece, my great niece, who's gone on. Even though you know there's hope, right? There is hope, right? All that believe there's hope. There's hope in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I know there's hope, and He lives. I know He lives because He lives within, within me. He lives. I, I'm His hand, and I'm His feet. Woo! Nobody can. This part down. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. You know, you, you don't have to want. You know why? Because He's our shepherd. He has everything we need in that we don't need. Woo. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadows of death, I will feel no evil. For thou art with me, thou rod and thou staff, they comfort me. They be, thou prepare the table, they prepare the table for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy. Shall follow me all the days of my life. I've read Psalm 23, the word of God for the people of God. And I'll be reading. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. 
Victory in Jesus. I will next have a prayer conference by co-pastor James and wife Adriana, Adrian, Layton, New Jersey. Oh, this is my sister. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, we just thank God for what he is doing and allow us to be here. Amen. Even if it's not on an occasion we would like to be here. But at this time, we're going to give the prayer comfort. Amen. Amen. Father, we come on today to say thank you. Thank you, God, for all that you have done, Lord, and all that you will do. God, continue to bless, continue to keep, God, and continue to restore this family, Lord Jesus. God, we've been making doing for a night, God, but joy does come in the morning. God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done thus far, Lord. But God, even in this, even in this, God, there is a blessing in store for this family, Lord Jesus. Lord, even though one of the children is laying down to rest, God, and going to be with you, God, God, it is a comfort to know that there is no more pain, there is no more misery, God. Lord, no more health issues, Lord Jesus. Lord, as she goes to be with you, God, Lord, we bless her life right now, Lord Jesus, because, God, she left a legacy behind. God, a legacy of education and a legacy of perseverance, Lord. God, we thank you for all that Chelsea stood for, Lord Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, for her family, Lord, for those who stood with her, God. Lord, bless them right now, God. Lord, you say in your word that, Lord God, that even the morning shall be blessed. God, the morning shall come. It shall come, God. And God, we give you all glory. And thank you, God, from, from Mike all the way down to the children. God, we thank you and we give you all glory. In Jesus' almighty name, let everyone that love the Lord now say, amen. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Uh, um, solo by um, Deanna White Cousins Obituary. A knowledge for an obituary would be by Miss Katrina Johnson, Senior God Sister. this song without crying, but I know it's a lot of people in here that probably feel like they could have did more or they could have been there, but Chelsea was a lover. She was a lover. I'm telling y'all, like, I don't care if she cuts you out. <laughs> she still loves everybody, so don't be in here feeling bad or guilty about nothing because she forgives you. She loved everybody no matter what. And I'm telling you, she I've called her in the hospital and she still was happy that I called to tell her about my problems and I felt so selfish for doing it, but she ain't never cared. She was a true lover and I just want everybody to know that about her. I think she was a light for a lot of people and I, I think I hate that it took this for a lot of people to realize that. But we here and we can be here for each other genuinely because that's what she wanted and that's what we need to do. Ain't no need for nothing else. So I'm gonna try to get through this song without crying. I'm gonna do my best. So 
fast How could it be that a sweet memory would be all all that we had left Now that you know everything But life just not the same I'm so empty inside <laughs> In my tears
Praise God, everybody. Praise God. Thank you, Deanna, for that beautiful song. Hope it's all right that I tell this. Um, I saw Chelsea uh, two Saturdays ago. I went to the hospital. I'm sorry. I'm Katrina. I'm Chelsea, God's sister. Um, I went to the hospital. I saw her two Saturdays ago and spent a little while with her. And like Deanna said, Chelsea is a lover. She loves everybody. <clears throat> um, and although all the years that I've known and, and talked with Chelsea, <clears throat> I don't know that we've ever said to each other, I love you. And before I left that day, Chelsea called me and said, I love you. So when I got the call, she's home with Jesus now. She really, 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 really affects me a lot. Um, I love you, sis. I love you, too. Um, we talked about her getting healthy and, and recovering and getting strong. I just didn't know she was going to be getting strong in heaven. Um, I thank God for that, too. Um, but I'm going to go over the obituary, <coughs> which is why I'm here. Um, so if y'all want to read along with me, um, our beloved Chelsea, on August 29th, 2023, Chelsea Chavis departed her life at 10.07 a.m. at Wake Medical Center in Raleigh, North Carolina. She was born December 17th, 1987, to Michael and Terry Chavis in Wake County, North Carolina. Chelsea loved spending time with her children, uh, with her favorite cousin, Cassie. She also loved hanging out with her mother. Chelsea graduated from Mary E. Phillips High School. She later furthered her education by attending and graduating from Central Carolina Technical College. Chelsea's employment history includes Quiznos, Waffle House, Joyce and Family, uh, Joyce's Family Restaurant, she, and she also worked as a caregiver, uh, as well as being a, a sister, a cousin, an aunt, a friend, um, a lover of all. Uh, Chelsea is preceded in her death by her great grandparents, Willie and Viola Brewington, uh, grandparents John R. Chavis, uh, Ann R. Broughton, Aunt Tony Chavis, uncles Donzel Brewington, and Tariq Terrell. Chelsea leaves to cherish her memories to two daughters, Nakia Pitts and Tariq Chavis, her son Jakir Chavis, her mother Terry B. Chavis, her father Michael Chavis Sr., her brother Michael Chavis Jr., her grandmother Becky Chavis, special cousin Cassie Chavis, her grandfather Lloyd Terrell, all, all of Raleigh, all of them of Raleigh, North Carolina, uncles Thomas Locklear, wife Terry of Middlesex, North Carolina, Herman Bruinton, wife Sue of Bunn, North Carolina, Brandon Terrell of Raleigh, North Carolina, and Derek McCullers of Virginia. Uh, she also has two aunts here from, and this is not on, um, Nikki Downing, I hope I'm saying that right, and Adrian Layton from New Jersey. Uh, also, uh, I'm sorry, Derek McCullers of Virginia, Aunt Tamethia Nutter of Macon, Georgia, Stephanie Nutter of Texas, Mary Leaf of Raleigh, North Carolina, a cousin affectionately known as Big Sis, Tiffany Haley, uh, husband Anthony of Raleigh, North Carolina, and a host of great aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, other relatives, and special friends. Also um, here today, um, we have the principal from uh, is that Southeast Magnet Middle School. What's the middle school? I'm sorry. Is it Southeast Ma Smith Magnet Middle School um, also attending here today um, in the homecoming, homegoing, I'm sorry. Also, we have some cards uh, that the family would like to read. Um, just a few of the cards, as, as you see, many, many cards. <clears throat> this one, our love and prayers are with you. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted, Matthew 5, 4. Thinking of you in this time and God asking to tenderly care for your deepest needs, 
with heartfelt sympathy. Love, Nita Leach. Oh, you better go to the bathroom. Thinking of you, bathroom. you have lost someone very special, someone who touched many hearts. Go, 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 go. Go. And those hearts will touch many more. And in that way, your loved one will always remain a part of you, a part of everything, with sincere sympathy, with love, Tori. No one could ever take your daughter's place in life. Praying that time will begin to mend your heart with beautiful memories and love. To Terry and family from Sylvia, love always, <coughs> your stepmother. And the rose still grows beyond the wall. Near shady walk. Near Shady Wall, a rose once grew, budded and blossomed in God's free light, watered and fed by morning dew, shedding its sweetness day and night. As it grew and blossomed fair and tall, slowly rising to a loftier height, it came to a, a crevice in the wall, the which shone a beam of light. Onward it crept with added strength, with never a thought of fear or pride, it followed the light through the crevice length and unfolded itself on the other side. The light, the dew, the broadening view were found the same as they were before, and it lost itself in beauties new, breathing its fragrance more and more. Shall claim of death us to grieve and make our courage faint or fall? Nay, let us faith and hope receive the rose still grows beyond the wall. Scattering fragrance far and wide, just as it did in days of yore, just as it did on the other side, just as it will forevermore. From Miss Bessie Chavis and family. Praise the Lord. Now um, it's time for remarks of memory. Remembry. Um, two minutes, please. I know most of us are going to get up and try to talk more than two minutes, but this is what the family asks. Two minutes, please. Um, after two minutes, I'm going to ring the bell. No. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> um. The first person, I'm just going to call everybody's name, and you can just come stand over here. Um, first person's name is Kim Cutts. She's going to do a poem, a poem. The second person is Christina Rockdale, God sister. Teresa Brewington, great aunt. Tiffany, Tiffany Haley, big sis. Preston Stokes, boss from her first job, Reverend Diana Powell, Nicole Wingfield, Georgia, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, Kirsten, jo Kirsten Jones in Georgia. And then we have a solo by Lashonda Lester and Ari, Ari, Caleb Monroe, Moore, okay, and their cousin. Sweet sister. I'm going to try to get through this. My anxiety has been through the roof this morning. I've been trying to prepare myself for this for about two weeks now. Okay. It's called the broken chain. He had no clue that morning that God was going to call you home to your name. In life, we love you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. We did not go alone. Part of us went with you the day God called you home. You left us with, with good memories. Your love and care for everyone is still our God. 
And though we cannot see you, you are always at our side. The chain is broken and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us all one by one, the chain will link again. And as Matthew verse 5, 4 says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. God will never abandon us during our times of grief. Instead, he will always provide us with love. May you all be blessed and find peace in knowing that our sweet Chelsea is in no more pain, no more suffering, because she is our angel now, and she will all want us to be happy. And I am just a friend of the family, a good friend, but I always tell her that I will be there for the kids, her mom. I will always love all of you guys, even if I don't even know you yet. So, hard. Chelsea, we love you, and we miss you so much. She would have called me like a million times by now. So, she's so different, but she's in my life now. Hello, beautiful people. Um, I wrote this down to keep myself together. So, I'm Christina Barksdale. Many of you know me as Christina Hooker. I have known Chelsea and this family now for over 20 years. Um, Chelsea and I met when I was eight years old. She was my first friend here in North Carolina moving here. Um, going back to when all of us lived on Brighton Road, right across from Larry's. Um, that's how far we go back. Um, she used to call me her sister and we were definitely that. We laughed, we fought, we argued, but we loved really hard. Um, Love is meeting the little girl and the young girl that I was with no sense of the world and just taking me in as her own, which is what this family has done for me. Um, I remember being on Broughton Road on the front porch dancing to Destiny's Child back when there were still five members because it looks <laughs> different now. <laughs> um, or going to our first concert that I remember us begging Miss Terry and Mr. Mike to take us to because who did we see? B2K. And that is what we did that summer. Um, and God, Chelsea loved the Morion. If y'all don't know nothing else, that was it. Thank you, Chelsea. That, and she still does to the point I will never forget. And I wrote this story down. Um, we almost died one night. Chelsea had this lit, burnt little piece of candle that had no smell, and it was on the desk. And she had all these B2K and the Morion pictures up there. It caught fire. Mr. Mike came in the middle of the night. Junior slept through the entire thing. He never woke up. And all I remember when we finally got it out is her blowing on the pictures going, my baby, I'm sorry I set you on fire. I apologize to you. She didn't care if we were about to die in the fire. Nobody else. It was about her. It was about him. She had all these pictures taped. So when you meet Chelsea and you just know all of the person that she was inside, although she had a hard experience like many and most of us do, that is just who we are as a family. Um, it's not about her being hard, it's about her heart and she is just blunt and honest. So to our angel and my angel with the sharp wings, know that we will miss you and love you. Know that you have left not only a legacy but a mark on this world. Know that this world will look different now that you are no longer here but that, you know, your love has made us strong enough to continue going because we know that you are on the other side guiding us through this journey that we continue to call life. You are an amazing mother, daughter, sister, family member, and friend. We just have to get used to feeling your presence from a different side, no longer being able to see you. We know you are with us each step of the way. Please say hello to all of our loved ones who have gone before you. And until we meet again, we love you. Thank you all. Good afternoon. I was just up here back in November for my brother, which is Chelsea's statement. Um, I remember calling him a star, and we just lost another star here, but she's gone on to a better place. Chelsea, it'll never be another like Chelsea. You know, she all, it was a 
joke that me and her had. I'm not even going to talk about it, but she laughed at me for years up until about two months ago. And um, I remember when she first went in hospital this last time, she called me on FaceTime. And um, she wasn't feeling good. So I told, I asked her, I said, well, Chelsea, do you want to pray? She said, yes, ma'am. She don't say yes, ma'am much to me. She say yes or old. That's what she called me, old. So I prayed, I prayed for her, and I asked God to give her the strength. You know, I said, whatever your will is, Lord, just give her some peace because she was hurting so bad. And she called me like four times, and if she wasn't calling me, I was calling her. And sometimes she'll say, Aunt Teresa, I'll call you right back. But, you know, I've, I've been knowing Chelsea all her life. Me and Terry grew up like sisters, you know. And I remember when she was a little girl, she was so rotten and couldn't nobody keep her. I remember my cousin Angela Stephanie tried to keep her one night. She cried so much. Terry called, Terry called and said, what y'all doing? I don't know if it was Angela Stephanie said. She she having a fit, and when she when they came and got her, they put the the dirty pebbles in the in the bag with her. But it's just a lot of stories that I could go back. And we and her daddy named her Goody. That's what they used to call her. But when she got older, she didn't like you calling her that. But I just say this to my family, my nieces, my nephews, my great nieces, anybody that that's affiliated with. My little family. You know, I said this the last time. We all we have. It don't matter what goes on in our family. We need to stick together. We need to stick together. People, you know, we didn't expect to lose Chelsea even though we knew she was sick. But what I'm telling you is my grandkids and my children, we don't, we don't have time to be mad at each other because if one of us, if one of y'all gone, the other one is gonna just be devastated. So what I'm telling my whole family is we got to stick together. Like I said the last time, whether we want to or not, we all we have. We all we have. And I love each and every one of y'all. And like my brother Joe say, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Hey, y'all. Um, I talked to Chelsea um, Monday night. And she was so happy. And she was up. And my daughter said, y'all, y'all feeling y'all selves today. And I said, yeah, I said, I feel good. And Chelsea was like, yeah, girl, you know, because that's what she called me, girl. And um, I said, what them doctors say? She told me. They told me they're going to take my leg. I said, well, I guess I'm going to have to roll you. And she said, no. She said, I'm going to get me a prostated leg. The point is, even, even till, uh, even after all that, <laughs> she still had hope. And she was so strong. And we be walking around here crying and bulljiving on little stuff. Every time this girl went on the knife, she was tough. Yeah. And she'll call me right after. She was getting pushed in the bed, coming out of surgery, calling me, checking on me. So I just want to say that was the strongest person that I know. And I'm going to miss my buddy. Chelsea was my buddy. <laughs> and I'm going to miss her. <sighs> That's it. <sighs> First of all, I give honor to God. He's the head of my life. The Bible teaches us that in Romans, in the time of tribulation, there's patience. And the patience that we develop creates character. And the character creates hope. God's hope is what Chelsea had in her heart. I say that because God drove her 
the Quiznos at that moment, at that time. My wife and I are devout, devout Christians. I was reared here in Walnut Terrace, North Carolina. It's no more. The old school. I had to go through the process. But God shaped me to guide me to be the man that I am today. And when I met Chelsea, there was a bright light within her. And God moved me to say, yes, I'm going to hire you. Because Chelsea had that very cheerful spirit inside of her. When you met her, you will never forget her. She's a fighter. She was a protector. She always talked about the mother, the father, and the brother. She was full of love. And during the time that I knew her, that's all that I knew. It was like a gut punch inside of me when my daughter, grew, who grew up with, who knew Chelsea and the family, told me that Chelsea had passed. I was heart stricken. And it's still devastated today. She reminds me of my father. He was a diabetic, and he went through the same process, but he was a fighter. Chelsea was a fighter. I always remember that she is, she might be gone, but she left a very part of her inside of your heart. I always remember, for her words will be echoed in your ears, and she will call you out. And we know that she will call you out because that's the fighter that she is. It's truly an honor to have known her, to believe in her, to know her mom, to understand the process of what they have gone through. But she's in a better place. And God has her in our hand. Amen. My name is Nikki Nicole Wingfield. I moved from Maryland down here to North Carolina. And I moved right next to the Chavis family. <laughs> from day one, we just clicked. I can't really believe how they really adopted me into their family. I didn't realize the love they really had for me and my kids. Um, Terry's been there for me, Chelsea as well. <laughs> I looked up the spiritual meaning for Chelsea's name. It means evoke, she evoked passion, kindness, and peace. And that's who Chelsea was. Chelsea was very loving, very caring, and had a lot of compassion for everybody. Now, if you make her upset, she still loves you, but she's going to let you know where you're wrong at. <laughs> She was, she was real, you know. Um, it just broke my heart when I heard what happened. <laughs> but she will always be a part of my family, as you. <laughs> I'm in a process. We're coming back down here because I have to be with my family. Because, like she said, we have got to stick together. So, thank you. My name is Kirsten, and I'm her daughter, but everybody knew me as Kay. I moved in as the crazy neighbor, and me and Chelsea clicked from day one with Terry, her crazy self. We was all just crazy together, and um, she was really welcoming and kind. We connected on so many levels, so many ways. Uh, I can't even explain it. Um, one thing I loved about Chelsea, get the real with you, whether you want to hear it or not, and then She'd be laughing at you in front of your face after she done told you the truth. She'd laugh at you, just looking at you like, you're going to take it or not. But 
it is what it is. It was black and white with her. It's not no in between. Um, <laughs> even when we had our fallouts, when I first met her, she was pregnant with Jasia. She didn't even know it just yet. She already had Makai. Makai would play with my daughters, and I would just come and get Jasia every chance I could. Even if me and Chelsea couldn't stand each other, I just walk in the door, come get them, and come get the diaper bag. I don't care what you're talking about. This is my baby. Take them over, and no matter what. But sometimes that was our reconnection of, you know, I'm sorry. You know, we sisters, we love each other. When I moved away, I've been out of Georgia for six years. And anytime I came to see her, it's just, I'm happy to be here. This is where I feel like I'm meant to be. Chelsea always had that welcoming spirit. No matter what, like, she was just, she was dope all the way around. I love Chelsea. I miss her. When I heard about it, I was angry. I was angry when I came here today. But that's because I'm looking at everything through the physical eye and not looking at it through the spiritual eye. She's been suffering. She's She's been caged, and that's good enough for me, and I love her, and I miss her. I miss all of y'all. It was good to see you. I did it without crying, Chelsea. She'd be laughing at me like, I made it. I did it. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Diana Powell, Executive Director of Justice Serve in North Carolina. I come on the behalf of our mayor, and the city council, our county commissioners, and the community as a whole, as well as this family, to come to know Chelsea as a daughter. When I got the news, I was traveling, and I had to pull over on the side of the road, and I had to give it to God. To God, you got it in control. I remember Chelsea had called me one day, and she said, Miss Diana, I got a family that needs help. They need housing. And I was like, okay, Chelsea. She said, I want to help them. I said, okay, Chelsea, what do they need? And she began to go down the list and tell me what they needed. I said, I will give you a call back. It took a while. Then I got a message from Chelsea. If you didn't want to help me, you could have just told me. <laughs> That's Chelsea. <laughs> and I said, no, baby, it's not that I didn't want to help you, but in this line of work, you have to pray. Because people will use you, and they will take advantage, because they know your heart. And she said, OK, so are you still going to help them? <laughs> and I said, yes, we will help them. And then a few weeks later, she called me. She said, Miss Diana. They just used the. <laughs> I said, Chelsea, I tried to tell you. People will pull on your heartstring. Chelsea had a heart of gold. She loved to give, and she loved people. And we as a community got to learn how to love each other. No matter what comes or what goes, we can have our highs and we can have our lows. But at the end of the day, God shall love one another. You are my brother, you are my sister, and you are not heavy. Community, we got to come together and love one another. I love you, Chelsea. Where's Tim? now, Diana. Um, I think I said this, though. A solo. LaShonda Lester. Good afternoon, everyone. So I have a story to tell about Chelsea, too. Um, I don't know if you'll remember this, Terry, but whenever I was pregnant with Ari, Remember a long time ago when Aunt Carolyn stayed on Swain Street and y'all stayed with her for a couple of months? But when I was pregnant with Ari, I went over there one day, right? I used to go over there all the time, all the time. And I went over there to see Terry and her family. So whenever I got over there, I was like, Terry, I'm, I'm like really, really hungry. What are you cooking? Because I could smell what she was cooking in the kitchen. 
And Terry said, well, I'm fixing some liver, and I'm fixing some onion, and I'm fixing some rice and gravy and everything. And I was like, mm, I, don't, I don't like liver. So <laughs> she said, well, if you don't eat it, you're going to be hungry, because that's all I'm fixing. <laughs> so, so she fixed the liver, and I saw Chelsea. I had never seen, most kids don't like liver and onion. But Chelsea, when she fixed Chelsea's plate, Chelsea just started gobbling up the liver. And I was like, she's really eating this liver, so let me try this liver. So I ate the liver. And since then, since I saw that child, she was about 12 or 13 years old, maybe even younger, I have liked liver ever since. And it could be that my body needed it because I was pregnant, but I have liked liver ever since. And also, I remember whenever she was in high school, Terry called me and asked me to do something that I thought was very important. And she asked me to do Chelsea's makeup for the prom. And let me tell y'all something. This woman was beautiful with or without it, but Chelsea was one of the most beautiful women in our family. I loved her so much. And I say you all are beautiful all the time, but Chelsea, she was beautiful and she was fearfully and wonderfully made. That's what Psalms 139 says, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I've heard all these stories about her, which I know are true because they all sound just like Chelsea. But Terry, what I want right. to tell well, you and Junior and Mike and the children today is that God is going to restore your heart. He's going to restore your heart and he's going to restore your peace. And to my family... God is right there, and he's going to restore your heart, and he's going to restore your peace, and he's going to give you a peace about the situation. So this song goes out to my family, and it's called My Heart Has Been Restored Once Again. One day, 
everything has changed. God answered me, and now I'm no longer the same. Oh, some things I've lost, some things I've gained. My heart. that song y'all your faith has been renewed once again mm, new mercies and new grace every day now it's time for the, the word and the eulogy eulogy has been done by uh, Reverend Ines Brewington which is Terry's aunt right okay please pray for her as she come forward Reverend well Stop, watch out, and give me 12 minutes. So if I take 15, everybody will be okay. You got a timer over here, Grandma. Amen. <laughs> you got a timer over here. You can look at the timer. See, Ari's got my back. Amen. Well, one thing I can say about Terry, Junior, and Chelsea, I'm on speed dial. Don't matter what time of day or night, uh -uh, let's pray for me. And um, I count it an honor and a privilege to be able to go 
to the Lord with them. Amen? Because I'll tell you to start with, I'll, I'll pray with you. But you need to be able to talk to the Lord by yourself. You might not be able to find Aunt Inez. You might not be able to find Brother Larry or Sister Inez. But if you build that relationship where you can go to God in a drop-dead moment, because, see, sometimes we don't have time to go, Father God in heaven, and go down all of his accolades and do all of that. Sometimes we have to be able to say, Lord, have mercy. Or, God, I need you, and I need you now. When we have our appointments with him, we can go through all of that, and we can read the scriptures, and we can take all of the time that we need. But sometimes we have to have that direct, real quick line to go to the Lord. I'm only going to share with you for just a moment. And um, I'm going to give you a message today that might not be the typical funeral message. Because one thing I figured out is that this whole book is a funeral message. Every bit of it. You can pull any one scripture out of this book, the word of God, and preach a funeral. But it's more important that not you have to preach a funeral, but you be able to share the goodness of the Lord. I was thinking about, um, when I thought about Chelsea, I thought about a fight. And me and Terry talked about this a little bit, but I thought about being in a fight. To my knowledge, I've only been in one fight in all of my life, and I think I was in the fifth grade. Because I was always scared to fight. I didn't know how to fight. But over the last 35 years, I've learned how to fight. I've learned that in order to defeat the enemy, you better know how to fight. Because life is a battle. There's a war going on. And I don't mean just over in the Middle East. I don't mean between Russia and, and, and all these other places, but there's a war going on right here, right now. We didn't have to declare war. War was declared on us. And the first recorded battle that I found, and some of you scholars might can tell me different, was a war in heaven. You say, oh, they don't fight in heaven. Well, there was a war in heaven. And according to Revelations, and I'm going to read it just so I won't make a mistake. I'm going to read you something from Revelations uh, 12 and 7. And um, when the Lord gave me this message, I, I was able to look at it, and, and I thought, wow, Lord. I don't, we always look at heaven as being this wonderful place with the, the streets of gold. And, and I'll tell you all about that in a little while. But according to Revelations 12 and 7, it says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. They fought against the dragon. But see, they didn't fight him by himself. It was him and his angels. They fought against the dragon and his angels. But he was not strong enough, not talking about Michael now, he was not strong enough. The great dragon was defeated, and he lost his place in heaven. He lost his place. You see, all of us have a place. When the Lord put us here, he gave us a place. That place is this physical body of ours. He gave us a body because otherwise we would be unlawful intruders in the earth. In order to come into the earth realm, we had to have a body. 
So when I was reading and studying this, I thought about how that battle took place because the devil, Satan, Lucifer, and all the other little names that we give to him, he wanted to take over. Now, I know you're not in a family where nobody wants to take over. But if he tried to take over in heaven, don't you imagine he's going to try to take over here? That was the first recorded Bible uh, uh, battle that I could find. And he continued his escapades all the way down to the Garden of Eden. He was fighting Eve tooth and nail. And the first thing he did was planted a thought in her mind. Because God had already given her the truth, but the truth is not good enough. But we'd rather believe a lie than to believe the truth. And so he planted a thought in her mind, and he said, uh, did God really? See, that little word carries a lot of weight. Did he really say this? And that thought, that doubt rose up in her mind, and she said, Mm, but maybe that's not what he meant after all. You see, we are in a battle. And the sooner you realize it, the sooner you can equip yourself to fight. The sooner you will be able to stand flat-footed and look the devil in his eye and say, you won't take anything else from me. I surrender what you already have. I'm done with that. You can't have anything else. But right now, this day, from henceforth and forevermore, you got to fight on your hands. Because when the devil realizes that you are afraid, first of all, because, see, he thrives on fear. He thrives on anxiety. He thrives on the thought that I just don't know if I'm going to make it or not. It's all in the words that you say. And I think about my pastor, she'll always say, wrong words. You better watch what you say because he will fight you with your own words. And I guess you wanted, you wanted to me to talk today about Chelsea and how wonderful she was. And she was. But y'all have already said that, so I'm not going to be redundant. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you how it is. Chelsea was in a battle. She fought and not, it didn't just start, Tiffany, yesterday. It didn't start last week, but she'd been in a battle for a long time. Because the Bible tells us that from the beginning of the world, the enemy was already here. And he looked for opportunities to fight you. He looked for opportunities to beat you down. He looked for opportunities to discourage you. But we don't have to surrender because we have victory in the name of Jesus. We have power in the blood. But the only way to be able to acquire that power, to use that power, to, to, to take advantage of what God has given us is that we accept it. Because I can lay a million dollars in that aisle and if you don't get up and get it, it's going to stay right there. But according to the word of God, he has portrayed himself as being bigger than God. But he's not. You know, if he's under our feet, then that means he can't be but so big anyway. But what we got to know is that we're in a fight for our lives. We're in a fight for our futures. We're in a fight to the end because the devil is not going to give up. He is not going to lay down and say, it's okay, you can go head on. But he wakes up every morning. The Bible says he goes to and fro about the earth seeking who he may devour. He's out to get you, and he knows you by name. He knows more about you and your shortcomings than you do. But I tell you what, all you got to do is look to Jesus, for he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the one that gives us power to tread on scorpions. He's the one that gives us the strength that we need. He's the one that wakes us up every morning. 
I got an alarm clock in every room in my house. But if Jesus don't say, get up, then they can ring from now until eternity rolls in. And I'll keep on sleeping. But God wants us to know that we have victory if we learn how to fight. You see, we fight by cussing. We fight by arguing. We fight by uh, 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 threatening people. And you see, fighting ain't like it used to be, Brother Larry. Used to be you get out in the street and fight and you're done with it, but now they bring guns. Uh-huh. So fighting ain't like it used to be. Because the devil has an arsenal of weapons. Slow down, man. And the first one he uses is fear. And he'll tell you, you can't do this. You can't do that. God is not going to bless you. God is not going to open the door. And most of all, God is not going to heal your body. But according to the word of God, he went to the cross that we could be healed, set free, and delivered. Hallelujah. And so whenever we think about the devil, Put him in his place. Uh-huh. And you say, well, well, Chelsea still died, but she had the victory. And you know how I know? Uh-huh. You want me to tell you how I know to say that? Because in June, one of them times when I called Chelsea, uh-huh, and I said, Chelsea, how you feeling? She said, uh uh Ness, uh, I feel a little bit down right now. So he said, well, she didn't have the victory because she was depressed. No, she had the victory and she was depressed. Because the, being depressed don't mean you are not victorious. Because we have victory in the name of Jesus. Uh-huh. I said, Chelsea, so what we going to do about that? She said, uh, I, just, I don't know. Yeah, but you do I said, well, let me tell you what we're going to do. First, we're going to pray. And then we're going to praise the Lord. Because the devil don't like it when you praise. I say he has waged an attack once again on you. I said, but you know what? Jesus got your back and I have too. And I said, Chelsea, let me ask you something. I said, what do you want out of this thing? And she said, I don't know. I said, well, I'll tell you what you want. I said, you want to be healed. She said, yes, ma'am. She said, I worry about my children. And this is what she said, and it touched my heart. She said, I know my mama taking care of them. She said, but I, w I want my children. I said, okay. I said, that's okay. You can want your children. I said, what else do you want? She said, well, um, I don't know because I can't eat nothing right now. I said, okay, food is the least of your concerns. I said, what else do you want? She said, I just want peace. I said, okay. I said, that's the word I wanted to hear. I said, let me tell you something, Chelsea. And she made this statement. She said, as soon as I get better and get out of here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my life together. She said, some things I got to stop doing. And I told her just like this. I said, well, I'm sorry to tell you, sis. You can't stop doing anything on your own. I said, but with the help of Jesus, I said, if you would just listen to what, I said, Aunt Annette would never tell you a lie. I said, but if you would just listen to what I'm telling you and accept it in your heart, I said, I guarantee you'll have peace. In the midst of whatever storm you're going through, you will have peace. And so I told, I said, that first of all, you can't stop anything on your own. I said, you don't have the power. But the Bible says we're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I said, so this is what you do. And Sister Diana, I took her back the old way. Uh-huh. I said, first of all, you got to repent. Uh-huh. I said, you got to ask him to forgive you. And I said, I'm not accusing you of anything. But once you hit the earth realm, you were a sinner. I said, so I said, Lord, forgive me. Uh-huh. And I said, when you ask him to forgive you, mean it in your heart. 
Uh-huh. I said, don't look at what you're going to get out of it. I said, just ask them to forgive you. Uh-huh. And then I say, and then repent. And repent doesn't mean what you think it means. Repent means to turn around and go the other way. Uh-huh. So I said, Chelsea, ask him. And she said it very quietly. Lord, forgive me for whatever I've done. I said, okay, that's it. That's the key. I said, now, repent. Say, Lord, I repent. And I'm not going to do those things with your help. Because I can't do it by myself. I said, tell him. Tell him. Say, Lord, I can't do it by myself. And she said that. I said, now, say, Lord, save me. Uh-huh. See, I was concerned about her body, Terry. Uh-huh. I wanted her to be healed, but I wanted her to be saved. Uh-huh. Because you can go to heaven if your body is sick because you're going to get a new one anyway. Uh-huh. You can go to heaven with one leg because you're going to have two anyway. But you can't go to heaven unless you're saved. And it did my heart good. It did my heart good. Because she, she understood me enough to do what I asked her to do, knowing I wouldn't lead her wrong. Uh-huh. And so I said, Chelsea, I said, from this point on, no one, nothing can pluck you out of his hand. I said, come what may from day to day, baby girl. Uh-huh. I said, nobody can take this away from you. I said, so when you come home, I said, we got something we can build on. Yeah. And it blessed my heart. It blessed my heart. I don't have a time clock. I had no idea she was going to pass in another month or so. But God knew. Uh huh. You don't have to be saved 30 years to make it in. There was a such thing as a thief on the cross. Uh-huh. And I don't imagine he had but probably less than a minute as the blood ran out of his body. But he said, Lord, remember me. Remember me. Lord, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. So that was all it required. But let's go back to the fight. We're in a fight. The Bible tells us that we got to fight this fight, but we got to fight it with the help of the Lord because he already has given us the victory. You see, sometimes we have not because we ask not. And say, Lord, I need victory over this situation. Lord, I need you to give me strength over this situation. And all these little quarrels and arguments, that stuff don't mount to a hill of beings in the full scope of things. Because God, the righteous judge, hallelujah, he's the only one. He's the only one that can take you from earth to heaven. Uh huh. And heaven, I don't care what anybody tells you, is a prepared place. And what did he used to say for a prepared people? You ain't just going any kind of way. Now, that's not the English that I was taught in school, but you ain't going any kind of way. But if you trust God and you commit your life to him, I guarantee he'll make you new. You know, my heart goes out to the family because over the last year, two years, we've seen so many of our family members, my husband included, cross over into glory and we all show up we all encourage each other we all love on each other we all have that compassion for one another but the same compassion you have for each other Jesus has it for you Uh uh-huh and you don't have to get ready to get saved it's no point to me preaching this Chelsea Uh Uh-huh. It's it's no reason for me to preach to her. The dead know nothing. And I'm not going to buck anybody's theology. 
But contrary to what you might believe, we don't have to worry about the streets of gold and the pearly gates and, and the long white robe and even the angel wings. We ain't got to worry about that. What we need to concern ourselves with is, is our heart. Mm -hmm. And I would be remiss if I would let you leave out of this place without telling you how to do it. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, it says that thou will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Hallelujah. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Christ was raised from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto righteousness. We've got to understand that there's going to come a day yeah. and we're all going to have to give an account unless the rapture takes us out. And again, I'm not going to mess with anybody's theology, but one day he's going to come midair. Uh-huh. And we're going to go up to meet him or else we're going to stay right here. Because even after he comes in midair, there's still going to be some left behind. And if you want to go up, those songs says going up to meet him. Going up to meet him. I'm going up. And I tell you what, I would love to take some of you with me. But just in case you don't want to go, do what you're doing. Uh-huh. Just in case you don't want to make the commitment, just keep on the way you're going. Because the fight is on. The fight is on. Going to read something to you right here. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. He's out to get you. He wakes up in the morning long before you get up. But the thing is, he's not omnipotent. He can't be everywhere at all times. Only God is omnipotent. But he creeps around and he scurries himself in and out of your lives, in and out of your families, in and out of your jobs, with your neighbors, with your friends, with anybody that he can. And he wreaks havoc. He's sneaky. He's conniving. He's tricky. Mm -hmm. And he's out to deceive you because he knows his time is not long. You say, well, I don't mind. Because all my friends going to be there. You won't know them when you get to hell. You won't know them. You're not going to know them. So I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to heaven. And just by chance, hopefully, some of them going to be up there. Hallelujah. Ah, let me give you a scripture here. I, I know you're supposed to read scripture. And you're, supposed, you know, you're supposed to do all of those. But uh, I'm going to bring it down for a minute here. Bring it down. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against spiritual weaknesses in high places. You see, you're not fighting against your next door neighbor. You're not fighting against your boss. You're not fighting against your brothers and your sisters and aunts and uncles. But you're fighting against an enemy that you can't see. You're fighting against an enemy who desires your very soul. And I thank God. I thank God that he has provided the way. And all we have to do is make the commitment. And here we go. The rest of that scripture, I held it for a reason. It says, the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Do you want to live or do you want to die in the battle? Do you want to live or do you want the fight to continue? Do you want to live... Or do you want to be able to say, well, I give up, devil. You can do what you want to. If you're not fighting against him, then you're fighting for him. 
If you're not for Christ, then you're Antichrist. <laughs> Antichrist don't necessarily mean 666. It means that you have not accepted him. It means that you're against what he stands for. It means that you made a decision that you're going to be against the word of God. And the word of God, this word right here, this is Jesus Christ. You say, what you mean, preacher? He's the word. He is the word. Mm -hmm. According to the scripture, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. But then if you go back to Genesis, it says in the beginning, it was God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he takes on the word. He is the word. Accept the word. I would never tell you anything wrong. But if we go back to Chelsea, she fought a good fight. My girl Terry, she fought a good fight. Uh-huh. She fought a good fight. And I'm, I'm going to find it here. I think we need to read this one. Yeah. Okay, second Timothy here. I got it. I look, I got a mark. Anyway, fought a good fight. I finished my course. Now go back and read it so you know I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I'm in the words still. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. Henceforth is laid for me a crown of righteousness that the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that great day. And not for me only, not just for me, but for all of you. When he went to the cross, he didn't just go and stamp Inez Brewington on it. But he stamped everybody's name. He didn't just go for diabetes. But every sickness known and unknown to man, he took it to the cross. So, are you going to continue to fight? Or are you going to lay down? Know your weapons. The only weapon that can defeat the enemy is the blood of Jesus and the word of the testimony. His testimony is that he hung, bled, and died. And he rose again on the third day. So don't try to fight the fight by yourself. You're no match for the devil by yourself. And the truth of the matter is, He's powerless unless you give him the power. We equip him to fight us. We give him everything he needs to fight us back. Hatred, jealousy, envy, strife, fear, doubt, unbelief. We give it to him. We take it and lay it right in his lap and say, now devil beat me up with all of this. And he takes advantage. But Chelsea fought a good fight. And just because there were down days, just because there were afraid days, just because there were painful days, does not mean she wasn't fighting. But she fought because she knew. She knew. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And now I heard someone say when my husband passed away that where he was, he wouldn't want to come back anyway. Once you see the other side, this earth holds nothing in comparison. Sure, she would like 
to have been with her children. But now she's not worried about that. She has no worries. She has no concerns. And she has an immortal body, a body that can't be sick anymore, a mind that can't be troubled anymore, pain that has totally subsided. Fight. And you don't have to fight by yourself because your elder brother Jesus is fighting for you. Your elder brother Jesus is standing on the right hand. Well, actually, he's seated. He hadn't stood up yet because when he stands up, get ready and look to the eastern skies. Because when he stands up, that's when it's going to be that great day of the rapture. So right now, he's seated at the right hand of God the Father. But guess what? We're seated with him in heavenly places. <laughs> He's already given us a seat through Jesus Christ. I heard somebody say, well, Chelsea is up there with this one and she's up there with that one. And, and, and we like to think that. But she really don't care about those people because she saw Jesus. <laughs> All of those people were important here, but there she's in the presence of the Lord. And all of those that had gone on before, they're not concerned about what's going on here. They're not walking around heaven looking for anybody, but they're enjoying the presence of the Lord. Nasty, brother. Are you going to fight? Are you going to study the enemy? You're going to find his shortcomings so you'll know how to fight. Study. Study. Because the more you learn, the more equipped you will be to fight. You can have someone praying for you. Day in and day out. But you better know how to pray for yourself. You better know that it's going to come a day when you only be able to pray for yourself. Oh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for having Terry. I couldn't ask for a better person to be with. She's my encouragement. Right along with LaShonda, she's strength to me. Terry, that's your baby girl. But you know what? This is just a shell of that body. Because the spirit took flight last Tuesday. And you say, well, I miss her. And you're going to miss her for a long, long time. There's not a timeline for grief. Nobody can't tell you how to feel. Nobody can't even tell you how, really, how they felt. Because everybody's feelings are different. But one thing you can be assured of, Junior, Mike, Don't one thing you can be assured of is that she has no regrets. She has no regrets. God, and then I heard somebody say he took the best and left the rest. Well, there's a lot of us best people still here. <laughs> Bro, Larry, I would like to think that I'm one of the best. And I'm glad he left me here. But one day, the Bible says every hair on your head is numbered. One day, my number is going to come up. 
And I want my testimony to have been, she fought a good fight. She finished her course. Henceforth will be laid up for me a crown of righteousness. That the one and only one that could judge me will be my judge. Uh-huh. You can judge by what you see, but he judges by what he knows. And right now, he's judging your hearts. But this is not the final judgment. I want you to take a moment. And I want you to think about this. If you had an opportunity... to give your life to the Lord, would you make that choice or no? It's totally up to you. Nobody can't make you. And if they make, I heard somebody say one time, if somebody can pull you in, they can push you out. So think about it. If you had an opportunity right now to surrender your life to the Lord, would you do it? And then I want you to think about this. Do you have to be in church? Stephanie, do you have to be in church? Are we going to the phone? Sister Joyce, do you have to be in church? No. This is the church. We are the church. We come together to fellowship in a building. Think about it. Chelsea wasn't in church. She was laying out there wait mad. What are you going to do? The fight is on. And it has been on ever since he fell from heaven. And he's accelerated the pace. I just told you because he know his time is not long. I'm not going to ask anybody to come to the altar because, again, that's symbolic. I love it. I love being able to come to the altar. But don't be sneaky. Close your eyes and bow your head and, and do all those other formalities that we do sometimes. All this stuff is just tradition. But I want you to just... Bow your head so you can't see what's going on around you, so you won't be able to see who, whose head is down and who's looking around. And talk to the Lord. It's wonderful to have altars full, but it's more important that our hearts are yielded to the Lord. And today, what better day than to say, Chelsea did it, and I'm going to do it too. Not just because she did, but because she saw the need. And now I see the need. It's a good time. It's okay whenever we go to a funeral and, and, and you hear these life stories. But what's going to be your life story? There's a little song that we used to sing when we were kids. And I think we need to bring, bring some of these songs back. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. We're all little ones in his sight. And we're weak. But he's strong. He's the strength of our lives. Yes, Jesus loves me. He loved me so much that he carried a rugged wooden cross. And I imagine it had splinters because it said nothing about 
those planks being sanded down. I imagine there were splinters, and, and I imagine that, that, that it, it had an odor to it. I imagine that it was so rugged that he carried it on his shoulders to the point where he couldn't carry it any longer. Someone had to carry it for him. But as he made his way up Calvary's hill, In my little bitty mind, I would say, he called my name. Every drop of blood that fell, he called my name. He called every affliction. He called every desire. He called everything that would concern me. And he took it to the cross. I'm going to ask that the morticians make their way to the front. Well, I think we have another song um, before then. And while the family is preparing to sing, I want you to come on and sing. And, um, and as they are singing, this is one of Chelsea's favorite songs. You see, one thing they do when they get together is sing. They get together and they sing and and, and everybody have a good time. Well, this is an opportunity for them to give a tribute to Chelsea. But it's also an opportunity for you to still surrender your life to the Lord. Test. Amen. Is Al in the house? Do we get you Al up here? Yes, Tess. He gone? I think I saw Al leave. Amen. Tess. God bless each one of you, and thank you for indulging me for yeah, pray for us a few moments. Yeah, y'all pray for us um, as we attempt to sing I, this song I, for Chelsea. I have a suggestion. I think Paul should sing. What you just talking about? You led me. What else you want to sing? Um, I'm just My voice got long, but that's fine. Do you do what you can, I Terry? And pound it the best you can. Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him, him me long. They are weak, but he.
As morticians are coming, once they're in place, I'm going to do the committal. And um, the repast will be at Joyce's, Joyce and Family Restaurant in Fuquay, Verena. <laughs> Ready? Good afternoon. On behalf of the family, they would like to thank each and every one of you for all the acts of kindness that you've shown to them during their time of bereavement. It is our prayer that you continue to keep this family in your prayers, because now at the house, there is an empty chair there. There is an empty space on the couch, and they're going to need you now even more in the days to come. To the family, on behalf of Arm Ferguson Funeral Service, we want to thank you for entrusting such a precious part of your life with us. We hope that something we've said or done has eased your pain or lightened your load. Terry, yesterday as I stood in the uh, chapel, one of the things that you said that was very, uh, kind of brought tears to my eyes was you said, God, how do, what, what do I do? Where do I go? And I'm going to tell you, you find yourself at the rock. Find yourself at the foot of the cross. When you don't understand why things have transpired the way they do, just know that your ways are not his ways and your thoughts are not his thoughts. I've never lost a child. Cannot imagine how that even feels. But I know there is a rock that is higher than us. You got to lean on him. Cast every single care, every single doubt, anything that comes to mind, you cast it on him. Because he does care for you and he does love you. Mr. Michael, I know you said that you were dealing with your own health conditions. God is a healer. And he will do everything he said he will do and more. But you got to knock and the door shall be open. That means that you got to act first. Every miracle that ever happened in the Bible, there always was some form of faith yes. that initiated the miracle. Yes. And everything you do, initiate that faith. And he's going to take care of you. And I know some of the kids are too young to understand. But let them know that as they grow old, that he said he will be a mother to the motherless. So even though she's no longer here, she lives within us. She lives, her legacy will still live on. Before I close and pass it back over to the clergy, let us all just come together and give a round of applause for the life and legacy that she's left behind. Amen. 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 And as I said again, please just continue to, this, this is day one of the healing process for this family. And they're going to need you. So anytime that you think of Chelsea or you think of something she said, just pick up the phone and call mom. Pick up the phone and call dad. And just pick up the phone and call the kids and just see how they're doing. If you can do anything for this family, please do so. We're going to go ahead and do the committal. Um, we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lo, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this perishable nature must put on imperishable and the moral nature must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on imperishable and the mortal put on immortality, then shall come to pass, saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. For as, the, for as much as the spirit of our deceased sister has returned to God, who gave it, we therefore commit the body to its kindred elements looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming is in glorious majesty 
to judge the world, the earth, and the sea shall give up their dead, and the imperishable and the perishable bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed, and made like unto his own glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Now may the God of peace, who brought us again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the good shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for that great resurrection day. to live with 